Hello and welcome to The Blind Potato. I have three short horses for you today. And if you want to learn more about the authors, link in the description. The title of this first story is Divorce. Before you start, I would just like to invite you to please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and click that notification bell so you won't miss any of my future uploads. So, get comfy and let's begin. I have a really high paying top classy job and they have a lot of perks ranging from free food, free gym membership, cinema tickets, holiday perks and even divorce perks. Our company will help their employees throughout their divorce by paying fees and providing good lawyers. They will even go a step further by spying on their spouses to get information that could help the divorce. I mean, it's a perk I have never experienced before. Also, I'm glad my workplace offers divorce support right now. Because my wife and I want a divorce. It's going to be a horrible one. She's coming for me, and our relationship has been a rocky one from the start. And I guess it was always coming towards divorce. Let me give you some advice. Never marry because you're scared of being lonely. You are just going to make a terrible decision. Anyhow, I told my boss about my divorce, and he planned an interview with me about it. He had already hired the divorce lawyer and someone to spy on my wife. I was confident I was going to come out good on the other end. The reason my company offers divorce support as a perk is because they need their staff in top form. They also offer top-of-the-range health care. As things were looking good, my wife had also hired a top lawyer. Her top lawyer completely wasted the lawyer my company had offered. My future was looking bleak, and I was really desperate. I was going to lose everything, but my boss isn't someone who gives up. I mean, I was grateful that I didn't have to pay divorce lawyer fees or any other fees as my company had paid it. But losing never feels good. Then, they switched my lawyer to someone else, and they spied on my wife every day. When we went to court again, it was a miracle as I was now on top. My future ex-wife couldn't believe it how things had turned around. She fired her lawyer. Then, she applied to a job at my company, but different area. Now she gets divorce support. Then one day, I wake up to find myself with a gun to my head. A Damask man tells me to get up and get in his car. He tells me as my wife and I work for the same company, we both get divorce support. They did a coin toss as to who to help, and I lost. I hate beggars. I hate people who beg for food, money, and clothes. I hate begging in general, and you can rightly assume that I don't give anything to charity. I despise those that keep begging others for assistance, and I come from a place where one had to work for everything for themselves. It should be made illegal to beg. And those that beg should be sent to prison. It just touches me the wrong way when someone begs to me for whatever reason they need or want. I hate begging, and I despise begging. Those that beg should be killed off. There should be no begging in the 21st century. In the past eras, they imagined the 21st century to be a utopia of some sort. But the 21st century is the most disappointing era. I have this woman that keeps begging me for money every day and it's starting to really irritate me. Every day she begs for money, and I have to say no, but my tone is getting angrier. She thinks that, because she is a woman, it would bring her some more luck than if she were a man. All men and women must learn to stand on their own two feet. It is important that struggle is felt everywhere. This woman always asks me for money when she sees me. Then, a boy comes up to me and begs me for food and clothes. I have a little respect for the boy as he is asking for clothes and food and not money. But those things still require money. I started to get angry at the little boy as he kept nagging me for certain items. This little boy thinks that because he is a little boy, he could get something for it. I know how these beggars work and I'm no fool. I can see their begging network at play. It's disgusting to beg and I would rather starve and die than ever beg. Then, that damn woman comes back to me again, and this time, 
she brings more ammo to the begging fight. She has a baby in her arms, and she is begging for money with a baby in her arms. I was furious at what she was trying to do, and I will not fall prey to her scheme. That baby is a weapon, and such a shameless act shouldn't be accepted in society. Then, that little boy comes to aid the baby-carrying woman. I knew they were working together, and I was disgusted. I truly was. I tell them to come with me into a room, and I shoot them. Now, I have to figure out what I tell to the police about killing my own family. The police don't have problems with men's own families, begging them for money, food, and water. Roman Empire I can't stop thinking about the Roman Empire, and for the past year, I have been thinking about the Romans. The Romans have done so much in their time of superiority. They had conquered so much land and successfully placed their influence on so many religions and cultures. The Roman Empire have been living in my mind rent-free for a whole year. It has taken over my life though, and I am struggling to function properly. It's just crazy how much the Roman Empire had done for the world. And now, they are just gone. They only exist in the history books and on TV channels. My girlfriend Stephanie really needs my attention. A couple of weeks back, when Stephanie managed to get my attention away from the Roman Empire for a bit, I wrote, I love you Stephanie on the work table. We work at the same office. Then, ever since I had written that, every day somebody has been carrying it on and keeps on writing I love you too Stephanie. And more people seem to be joining in. We have tables covered in I love you too Stephanie. And she is clearly freaked out by this. She wants me to do something. But I am constantly thinking about the Roman Empire and how their civilization worked. Like when I was meant to go to the HR about whoever keeps writing I love you to Stephanie on tables and walls. But I was distracted by the roadworks. I couldn't help but observe the roadworks and this reminded me about the Romans and their wonderful roadworks. I was also meant to have a private word to some co-workers who me and Stephanie thought were behind the writing. We love you too Stephanie on the tables. I never got around to it, as I was distracted by the rivers and ponds. It reminded me of the incredible Roman aqueducts they had built, and I really wanted to be part of the Roman Empire. Then, we found We Love You Too Stephanie inside our cars and inside our homes. Stephanie was freaking out, and she now was too emotional to call the police. I had to do it but I got distracted by the Roman Empire's rules and infrastructure. The Roman Empire were truly amazing, and I keep seeing the Roman Empire and hearing the Roman Empire. I really need to force myself out of it and to stop myself thinking about the Roman Empire. Then one day, when I snapped out of day dreaming about the Roman Empire, I found Stephanie all stabbed up with the words, We love you too, Stephanie, all over her body. Her death reminded me about how the Roman Empire dealt with death. If you enjoyed those horror stories, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And click one of the videos here if you want more horror stories like that. And as usual, I'll see you again next time. You have a creepy evening.